Hello and welcome. It's Bobby at the Paper Jungle. I have another project for you. This is a design team for Country Craft Creations. This is her exclusive collection called One Stitch at a Time. As it says, it's a sewing theme paper. You can see I got it a little bit chunky in here because I have a pair of scissors. But if you don't put the scissors in there, it's not going to be quite so chunky. Or maybe I can find a pair that's a little bit thinner. But um, I just put an eyelet in the top of it, or in the point here, and just wrapped some baker's twine around and I attached some charms. This is a pair of scissors, a dress form, a sewing machine, and a spool of thread. And I had these little beads in my stash and I just added those on there just, just for pretty sparkle. So this is the 49 Market um, Envelope folio I think it's called and here is the back of the album I just pieced a bunch of my scraps together to save paper so that I'll have enough to make a second project so this opens like this now you could use it with this being the top but I used it sideways so it opens out this way and then when you open this you have the gatefold here and it opens out like this. I have some hand sewing needles, some T-pins, some straight pins, and then three little bobbins with thread. Uh, I added a couple charms with a button here at the top, and I typed out pins and needles on Word, and I cut these items, the little boy, and the simplicity number off of an old pattern I had in my stash, and these two pieces are from the design package. Isn't that cute? I just thought he was a cute addition to that. And then I added a little piece of rickrack here, and I used my pinking shears. I did do a lot of stitching on this one. You don't have to, though. It'd be just as cute without. And then I have a magnet on here. This is another collage of just scraps of paper that you can add something here to. And when you open it out this way, in the center, I have a ribbon closure. And I have this little envelope. It will have elastic in it, but I don't have any elastic at the moment. That little pocket page opens out like this, and you have more room. Then I have two more of those little bags here. This one is for hook and eyes, which I don't have any yet. And I have more buttons in this one. I thought they turned out really cute, and I used up almost every off-cut scrap that I had so far. And I've got enough full-size pieces of the 8x8 collection that I can make another project. And then I just took one small piece, stitched it together, and added a measuring tape in here. So that ties back up. This paper is so pretty. Oh, I forgot to show you one thing. On this one, it flips out. I forgot to show you that. It's got a full page here where you can add more things, and I have a double pocket. Actually, it's a triple pocket here. Let me get a scrap and I'll show you. I have a tuck spot here, one here, and then one here. Whoops. This is wide. No, it's not too wide. So you've got three spots there where you can tuck something in. And then on the left-hand side, this has a magnet closure in this little pocket. I have another one of the little envelopes. So, um, I cut this off of an old simplicity pattern that I had in my stash. And this is one of the cut aparts. And then I have some more buttons in here. And this one will hold snaps. And then I'll probably glue it on an angle like that. And then it opens this way, and you have another spot for more embellishments. And this is what makes it so bulky, is these little scissors. I'm kind of watching for another pair of scissors that the handles aren't quite so bulky, and maybe I can cut down on the bulk of it. But I thought it turned out really cute. I'm very happy with it. I would like to reduce the bulk a little bit, but it's not necessary. I intend to carry this in my suitcase when I travel, and I think it'll be a great addition. You never know when you might need to replace a button or what have you when you're traveling. 
so it'll be handy. I did not put anything on the outside of the cover for the fact that it will be in, in my suitcase, so I don't need to make sure that, I mean, I don't need to have a lot of stuff on the outside other than these charms. I think that that is enough. So that is what I created with this collection. Now, when you go to the 49 and Market site, they give you a suggestion how to decorate this and how to use the pieces that come with the uh, envelope folio kit. I folded them different. You can do them exactly like they do if you wish. It's your choice. It's your album. Make it however you wish. But I, I'm real happy with what I did with this one, and I hope you enjoy it. So uh, stay tuned for the free tutorial that follows this, and I will see you soon with another Design Team collection. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome. This will be the tutorial for the Gatefold Flip Folio Envelope Album by 49 Market. Now this came from Country Craft Creations, of course. It is this envelope folio. Looks like this. And it comes with several insert pieces. And it has and I'll show you what I'm, I'm not going to do it like um, they have a website and they show you what their suggestion is for putting it together. But I'm going to do it a little bit different. It comes with this gatefold piece. Now mine was a little bit longer. I had to trim it off just a little bit because it did hang over this top edge. But, you know, with things that are mass produced like this, that can easily happen. And then it has some connecting pieces, too large and too small. So I'm going to connect this one with one of the longer ones here so that it will actually open out like this and then we'll have more room underneath. And then, well, let's just go ahead and add that down. Let's do that. We'll do that. So you can get the the basic layout idea. I'm running a little bit behind on getting this tutorial out because I was in the hospital for a few days and then when I got home I had another bout and ended up back in the ER again. That's not been fun. But I'm still here here to tell about it. And no worse for the wear, I guess. So, each day is something to be grateful for, I promise you that. Oops, let's get it right over to the edge here. And looks like that's got just a tad of overhang there. So I'm going to trim this little piece off so that it's flush. And burnish this down. This is pretty thick cardstock. And then we will attach it just inside that score mark. You always want to be sure you don't overlap it. Because then it doesn't fold nice. I will put this down. inside that score line. And then on the center panel, uh, you have two um, large panels 
One has a long flap here. The other one has a short flap. I am going to put them together. I'm going to attach this one here. And I'm going to attach this one on top of it. Just kind of eyeball it and then a tuck spot this way. So let me burnish these again. This is pretty heavy cardstock. I may have said that up two times already. Better to repeat yourself than to admit it all together, right? So this is going to attach on top of that one. cute. <laughs> Aren't you quite the little... <laughs> little gardener? Yeah, little gardener. <laughs> this is going to go here, but I'm not going to attach it just yet because I may need to add a ribbon and until I decide, decide on the paper I'm going to put here, then I'm going to hold off on putting that down. So, let me put a little clamp on here. That'll hold it in place. That will sit there. Now on the third panel, let me fold this up here. On the third panel, here's what I'm going to do. I cut a piece of the pink, and let me tell you, I'll tell you the color I use. It is called... Ballerina pink. That is the color that is from my colors. And I cut it just slightly smaller than the black. And then I uh, cut out my design paper and I stitched around it on the sewing machine. And then I'm going to use one of these small one of these shorter pieces, hinges, and I cut, I measured down one inch from the top and one inch from the side, and then I cut a six inch slot. Now this piece is six inches, so you need to go just a little bit above and a little bit below your six inch slot, and then slip this into place. And then you can glue this down, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to add some glue up under here. I didn't want that to show on the outside is why I cut the slot in it. If you don't want to cut the slot, you can always leave this half inch up here, but then you'll just need to cover it with something, or at least I would. But that's totally up to you. And then we can glue this into place. Um, wait a minute. I better not glue it down yet because I might want to run a ribbon through here. The thing is, and I'll just show you what I mean, this, I want to put a magnet on this. What I have planned, there's another, a second gatefold that looks like this, which would open up and down, and I didn't want to use it that way, and don't worry about these spots. I was splatter painting something the other day, and I got carried away and got white on it, but it's going to be covered with design paper, so that doesn't matter. So... 
I decided to take the gatefold and fold it back on itself in half. And then I just put my thumbnail in this top corner and folded it down. And I'm going to attach this here. And then I want to put a tab under here with a magnet. I need to get back up under here again. But the thing is, I want to make sure that my, see that's going to sit right there. I want to make sure that my opposing magnets, this one, if I have a magnet right here, actually, let me do that. if these are facing gray magnets. I don't think so because they don't have the sticky on them. No, those aren't basic gray. Those aren't going to be strong enough. Let me get my basic gray out. Here's the plan with this. I am going to use this as my closure on this gatefold. And I haven't added the back on it yet, but that's no big deal. This magnet isn't going to interfere with this one. And I just bought a whole new pack from Country Craft Creations. And what did I do with them? I probably hadn't put them away yet. Let me see. Thank 
trouble getting into these. sure that one is not going to interfere with the other. can glue this into place.
this down. Oh, if I'm in frame. It's fine just to glue it in place. I just thought I would. I've intended to sew on several projects and just haven't done it. Okay, and it goes this way. center did I? It's okay. It'll work. It's going to be hidden anyway. So that takes care. And this will be glued down once I add paper under it. So there is your basic layout. And this is going to go here. And now I need to decide which paper I'm going to use so then I can bury my ribbon up underneath. So let me pick out the paper and I'll be back shortly. Okay, I have been working along adding some design papers to this project. Now we put all of this together and I just added a magnet to this card so that it will hold this gatefold shut. This is just a piece of lightweight cardstock that I mounted some of my scrap pieces to uh, to make a little collage and then I zigzagged where the pieces join and just glued them down on here. Now I added pins uh, straight pins here, some T-pins, and some basting needles, and then I printed this on Word. just says pins and needles, and I'm going to glue that down at the top of this. I need to fill up my glue bottle again, I think. I'm not going to put dimensionals or any kind of uh, dimensional tape behind this because I don't want to give it too much of an elevation and maybe lose my my magnet being able to catch. So I'm just going to stick that down there. It says pins and needles. And then on this pocket, what I normally do, and I thought I would save this to show you in case you're fairly new to making pockets, what I like to do is attach the bottom piece first because anything that you put in here like this is going to catch on this right there. It's going to stop it. So if you'll take a piece of just regular scotch tape and put it over this edge, then when you slide something down inside of it, it'll go right over that tape. It won't catch on that edge. Then add your glue here. 
and glue your sides down. It just makes it a lot easier. So you don't have to constantly be wiggling what you want to stick down in there. Now I did do a lot of stitching on this one. You don't have to. It'll be fine without. I just thought being as it was a sewing piece it would add something extra to it. A lot of it you can't really notice unless you're really looking at it straight on because I used white thread. I didn't use black or brown like you see a lot of times. Now in this pocket I want to put some little bobbins that I made. And here's a couple more. I haven't put any twine on yet. But I wanted to show you how I made them. I just cut let me measure them for you real quick. I just cut these out of scrap and this is from the Irish cream my colors and it is one and a half wide and one two and a quarter tall and then I use the small envelope punch and I put it in at three quarters of an inch and punch it flip it over Punch this side too. And we'll turn it around and we'll do the other end. It's three quarters. Oh, goodness. I don't have the strongest hands in the world. And then I just put my scissors in here and trim that centerpiece out like that. And then I use the We Are Memory Keepers corner rounder and I use the, the middle size and just punch these top corners. And that makes a little bobbin thing and you can wrap your thread around it. another one so we'll have those in there I'll wrap thread around them so this just closes like this and holds it with a magnet now there is a template to help you cut your your paper for this it's just a little bit smaller and I'll cut a piece for the inside and the outside of this flap I haven't done any of the outside then I took a piece of scrap and it is from, <clears throat> let me see if I've got another piece of it. Yes, it's off of this sheet of paper. I took this little edge here. I'll give you a measurement on what I cut. I cut, this was an off cut from, some, from one of the other pieces. It's just a bit over five, maybe five and an eighth. By eh, about five and not about five and an eighth tall, and I scored it at a quarter inch like this, and then I just folded it in half. And I'm going to take this to the sewing machine, and I'm going to sew it across down the side, across the bottom, and up this side, and then it's going to hold a measuring tape like that that I can put in there I might need to refold that it sticks out a little bit more than I wanted it to and I'm not sure where I'm going to put it just yet I may put it up under here I don't know but I'm going to put it somewhere because I like it so that is that and then I made a little uh, pocket with one of the little cut aparts the sewing machine and I'm not sure where I'm going to use it yet either but um, I'll give you a measurement on the blue I put um, I think it's called Irish cream let me see if the sticker's still on the back of it yeah 
is. It's called Irish Cream. And it's kind of a, it's got the sparkly glitter on it. That's what I used for these too, for the little bobbins. And then I used the blue, which is It, well, wait, here's my order. Here's my uh, Irish cream, sweet pie. It's called Sky. The light blue is called Sky. And it is four inches by two and three quarters. And I just scored it. And I scored a half. That's a half. Yeah, I scored it at a half on both sides and along the bottom and just folded it in to make a little pocket. And I'll use that somewhere. Then the next thing I did was, um, where's that piece of cardstock? Oh. On this one, I put, um, this is a piece of seam binding from Tammy's store that I had in my stash. I'm not sure the name of it. It's kind of um, a taupe color. It's a very pale, almost a champagne color. You put the lid on this before I dip my arm in this ink pad. And this is a pocket here. It opens out like this and I used a cut apart and a couple of scraps and then the Irish cream again. And then this opens out and I used the sewing machine and the fabric page. And of course all these have to be embellished yet, but I wanted to share that with you just so that you can see what I did with mine. You may want to make yours the same, you may want to make it different, which is okay. Whatever you like is what it wor what works. Because it's your album, you should be happy with it. I'm not the best bow tire. And then on this side, this is the flap we made with the magnet. And it goes like that. And I showed you how I folded this pocket down. I'm going to glue this here and here, which I can do that now. Just haven't done it yet. I seriously need to fill this pocket up. I got some more glue with my order and I just haven't filled it up. Use the magnet that came with the kit. And stick down. It's not sticking. Well, what I'll do is put some glue on the magnet so I can see where it goes. And we'll push this into place. Now I can see exactly where it goes. Oh, I see why it's sticking to that. Now, we'll put the magnet right there. And let's put another piece of tape over there. I took three pieces of scrap and I just stitched them to um, a piece of lightweight cardstock that I have in my stash and I am going to cut this to fit here and then I'll have a piece for over here and then I'll take it to the machine and stitch all the way around both panels and that will be my inside piece there and then it opens this way and I was going to leave this open this way, but I decided I wanted to flap it down and then glue this shut. So I took the smaller 
of one of these hinges and I cut it in two pieces and used it for my hinge so that I've got a little bit of a pocket and <clears throat> excuse me I need another piece of tape in here need to put it here so that uh, let me see no it needs to go right here there we go now I can glue these two down I am going to add some more glue for it anymore and I'm probably out of frame. Let me close this so you can see. I just made a hinge out of that. What was a longer hinge, I just cut it to fit here so I could make a pocket with a little bit more depth to it. And then we'll close this down. And that will give me another insertion point. And then I need to put a little glue on here, on this little flap. So we've got plenty of places to put, to insert more things now. Just remember <laughs> and I still have to put paper behind this because this is hinged, remember it lifts up so we've got two more places to put something here. So I have to do that yet. So when you close it, it will go like this and like this. So this is actually your outside, so I'm going to take and put an X right here so I can remember when I pick my papers, this is what shows from the front, because it will be like this. So I need to pick this to correspond with this. Alright, so that's where I'm at so far. I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to do this. sew up that piece for the um, the measuring tape. Can't think of words today. And then I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, I want to give you a bit of an overview of what I've done to finish this off just so that you understand. So here is the inside of the album. And I had these little uh, sacks in my stash. <coughs> Excuse me. And I will show you. See how crooked they are off to one side? I just took my pinking shears and just trimmed them off and tried to straighten them up a little bit so that I could use them for some embellishments. So on this side, this is the one with the magnet and opens this way. And I don't have anything in here as yet. And then it opens out this way. And Here's one of the little sacks. I'm going to put snaps in it, but I don't have any snaps at the moment. I will get them when I go to town next time, but I don't live close to town, so. And then this one is one of the cut-aparts. It says, any day spent sewing is a good day. I just put the cut-apart and a piece of rick rack trim and a little pair of scissors. It goes in this pocket. And then in this pocket, I put some buttons. And I added a little piece of twine, 50 cents. You don't see that anymore. These I've had for in my stash forever. I just found them in my button box. And I used one of the cutter parts, and I cut this off of a simplicity pattern and just put it on there. So that is that panel. And I'm going to stick this back in here for now. And then on this side, or in the center, I have another one of the little envelopes and I'm going to put some elastic in there. Just slips in this pocket. 
I haven't added anything to this one as yet. This one is the pocket I showed you that I was going to sew shut. I've just glued it down uh, across here and here and just a little bit up the bottom. And I added my measuring tape in there. And then two more of the little bags. This one will hold hooks and eyes. And this one has more buttons in it. I just thought they were cute to add all of the notions. So that goes there. And this just ties back up. I got it pretty full. I tend to do that a lot though. So this rolls up and I just put a bunch of scraps together and make a, a quilt type look. Then on this section, this is the one that opens out this way with all the pins and needles and what have you. So we've got our sewing needles here. We've got some T-pins, uh, some straight pins. And then I just typed pins and needles on Word and glued that down. I added a couple charms with a button. And here's three of those little bobbins that I showed you how to make. And this is just a piece of the My Colors. And I cut out a piece of um, measuring tape off the back side of one of the design papers. And I cut this little boy out of the same simplicity pattern and just put him on there. I just thought it was a cute addition to that. So that is that. And then it opens this way. don't have anything here yet. And I have a double pocket over here that I can add things to. On this little pocket, it is just a long strip. And I'll give you a measurement. And if I can find it, there it is. It's a 12 inch strip and it is four inches high and all I did was fold the top corners down and then just accordion fold it so that it looked like a pocket and it's glued on three sides. And you could also use the envelope punch board and make something like this and then you can have a tuck spot back here as well, here and here, right there. So that'll give you three spots to put something. So that is my project. I thought it turned out really cute. I do like it. I got it a little chunky, which I tend to do sometimes. And I just put an eyelet in here and added some twine. And I'm just going to wrap it around. I thought it turned out really cute. I'm really happy with it. So that is my project. I hope you enjoy it. If you decide to make one, I hope you'll share your project with us as well. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you back soon. Bye.